You know, I, I'm, I, as you were speaking, I was thinking about how, <coughs> or wondering how you would categorize the current support mm -hmm. of poetry in, in both Britain and the United States. Yeah. So two things have happened. There's work done by people like Bernadine Evaristo and a number of other people here in the UK. The UK has changed a lot. I mean, I was here in the 90s a lot. And I remember, you know, Bernadine and I, we were talking about that the other day. I remember writing an article for Wasafiri about black British novel and so on and so forth. And I could pretty much cover all the writers in one article. <laughs> See, you can't do that now. No, no. No, you can't, you can't do that now. When I, when I won the, the, the Ford Prize in 94, at that time it was, I was the first black person to win it. I wasn't even British. The British, black British poets were here, but they were not going to win that. Right? So I won that prize. It, do you know how many years it took before another black poet would win it? Now, in the last few years, black poets have been winning. The people of color have been winning this prize. So something is changing. Faber has a tremendous aversion to write publishing people of color. <laughs> it's, 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 it's tremendous. Like, um, and, and, and I've talked to these people, and it is remarkable, <laughs> the nature of their aversion. Like, it's fundamental. Now, all of a sudden, now occasionally you see they're letting a few people in and so on and so forth, right? But, but there's a stranglehold that, that has to be shaken up because it has nothing to do with value. It has nothing to do with the quality of the work. It's a very peculiarly annoying thing, right? <laughs> but, but that's an understatement. That's an <laughs> understatement. That's an understatement. But, it's be, but it has to be challenged, right? It has to be challenged. And whatever anxieties are making people hold to those views and so on and so forth and those sort of gatekeeping attitudes must be constantly challenged. And I believe they're challenged. And I know folks here, there's some people here, shh, Kwame, don't say that because, you know, I might get with favor, you know, and so on and so on. It's me, all right? They, they, you know, tell them it's me. It's not you. You like them. You're, they're your friends. But it has to be, <laughs> but it has to be challenged because I think that's absolutely necessary. But I do think that's changing, right? That's changing. So we are seeing more publishers emerging. We're seeing that when there's a finalist for the prizes and so on and so forth, it's varied. Roger Robinson, right, um, has been doing extremely well and, and so on and so forth. Do you know how many years Roger has been toiling in this territory until there's a, you know, won the T.S. Eliot Prize and so on and so forth. So I think there's some important things happening. And also in the U.S., what has been interesting is the ways in which organizations like Cave Canham and so on and so forth are sort of making creating diversity. And the truth is, we can say a lot of bad things about America, but the one thing you can say is that the poetry scene in America is probably one of the most diverse scenes anywhere in the world. Right? It, 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 it just, it's just, it's just, it's just, and that didn't come accidentally. People worked for that. It, it's within memory when, when, Black writers had to get together to write a letter to the, in the New York Times because Toni Morrison could not get a nomination for a national book. James Baldwin was never, James Baldwin never won a national award in the United States for his writing. So that wasn't long ago. So, so that, we're getting this march of success and so on and so forth. People worked for that, right? But I think that's opened up spaces. And part of the work, Toni Morrison wrote a beautiful essay, article about her emergence. And, and she said African writers gave her confidence to say, I can write about black society without depending on the white gaze. And what she was doing was she was saying, let's have a conversation that understands that the legacy, the heritage, the inheritance of the black writer in America, in Britain, is the writer in Africa. We are part, we're not in competition. We're part of the same important conversation. And if we don't recognize that, 
then, then, then we're in real trouble, right? So, so, so that, to me, that growing presence and so on, so I don't think poets have to understand that necessarily, but somebody does. <laughs> like, and, and sort of remind people, this is not something that you just run into and it just happened. People have done work to make that space um, one that is, is more open and that is more inclusive. 